time ago we talked about monoids and a monoid is a set so here I have the T should be a function a contract that describes a set and an associative unital binary operation so it takes two elements of the set and produces an element of the set together with a function that gives you the identity element so it takes in nothing and returns a set um, and then I gave two examples of monoids one of them was string concatenation where the identity element is the empty string and another one was addition of numbers where the identity element is zero so now if I said something like this monoid func do it this way func and function x, y, return prod n, x, y, and So if I did this, it wouldn't satisfy the criteria. I mean, this wouldn't pass the tests for associativity, right? Because if I did um, prod n of prod n, x, y, z, where x, y, and z were contracts, that would only accept things of the form a, b, c, where a passed the contract x, and b passed the contract y, and c passed the contract z. Whereas, prod n x, prod n, oops, y, z, this would accept things of the form that where the parentheses are on the left on the right whereas before they were on the left so it's not associative and yet there's a way to map between this representation and that one that doesn't depend on a b or c it's a natural isomorphism between these two contracts Similarly, the contract X would expect something with the form A, a value that passes the contract X, whereas the contract X prod n, this contract would expect something of the form a empty list. Now again, these two aren't the same. This isn't, I mean, what I'm claiming is the identity here. When I multiply using this thing, this is supposed to be my times here, right? 
So if I multiply x by the identity, I don't get the same thing as just x. And yet, again, there's a natural isomorphism between these. There's a way of mapping from this to that that doesn't depend on a, no matter, or, or x. Whatever contract I use there, the mapping is going to be the same. When I have this thing here, I don't get a monoid. This doesn't pass the tests of a monoid, but it it's almost a monoid. It's a monoid up to these natural isomorphisms. What were equalities in the tests for a monoid are now natural isomorphisms. This process of weakening a uh, structure, weakening the equalities down to natural isomorphisms, and then adding in rules that, that these natural isomorphisms have to follow so it still behaves well, is called categorification. What we have here is the what would have been elements of this monoid are contracts. So we've gone from an element to an object. And what would have been functions on the elements are now functors, right? You give me contracts, I give you contracts. You give me guarded functions, I'll give you a guarded function. So they have gone from functions to functors. And what were equalities have gone to natural isomorphisms. And then we have to give new information about what properties these natural isomorphisms have to satisfy, what equalities, what relationships they have to satisfy. And this gives a tremendous number of new concepts. Now, our notation when we're talking about um, sets is related to the notion of, I mean, the notation we use when talking about numbers. It's this idea of counting the elements in a set. Counting is decategorification. You're taking a set that has all of this structure of different identities of each element. You know, you could have the set of, um, say, the set of band members of OK Go. But when you count them, you just get the number four. You lose all of the unique properties of these elements. So it's throwing away a tremendous amount of information. So decategorification is the process of replacing a category by a set, or a set by a number an isomorphism by an equality. So I have the band members OK Go, and I have the presidents on Mount Rushmore, and then if I count both of them, I get the same number. Four equals four. But, if I'm just considering the band members and the presidents, I can make an isomorphism. For each band member, I can choose a president that represents it, and go back again. So what were isomorphisms, when you count, when you decategorify, you get equalities. And so you're throwing away information when you're going down, and you're adding information when you go back up. Now just like when you integrate a function, and you have that plus c at the end, you get to choose the constant. There's no um, canonical way of choosing the constant term in an integral. In a similar way, there's no canonical way of choosing these extra relations that the natural isomorphisms have to satisfy. You have to think about the problem and what's the most general case that you are interested in capturing, and then think of those equations. But in particular, monoidal categories turn up all over the place. Um, 
I was talking about notation for sets versus notation for numbers. Well, the empty set we write as a zero with a line through it. Um, in fact, on computers, zero has a line through it to distinguish it from O. The one element set is often denoted one. Um, we use a little x for the Cartesian product of two sets. And of course in elementary school, up until you started algebra, you used x to mean times. Um, and even though, well, I guess that one doesn't work. Um, there's a sort of box-shaped U for disjoint union. It's becoming increasingly popular to represent the disjoint union of two sets with a plus. Um, so that notation there is meant to evoke what happens when you count the sets. And you actually get these, these concepts when you decategorize.